Whoa, totally different scene, right? So this is my new studio of sorts while I'm back here in Florida and you'll be seeing this for the next three or so months before I move back to Louisiana and get back situated into that office style format. Uh, but for now, this is what it will be like. You may have seen the Marshall cabinet stacks that were behind me in the GTX 10 Eddy video I uploaded a few days ago. Uh, but I have since moved that entire stack over there. It's on that side of the room. So it's just kind of chilling there. Sorry, I know you guys were into that. I I didn't really even think much about it, but I actually received more comments about the Marshalls than I did about the 1080, and, and that was a little strange. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna have the monitor here, the computer here, and I have a receiver here because I have a 5.1 surround sound system hooked up to the computer, and uh, I'll detail that all in another video. What I want to talk about in this video is the Xeon 1230 V5. This is a Skylake-based processor, so we're talking 14 nanometer transistor design, and it's been thrown into the rig behind me. The motherboard I have in there is an ASUS E3 Programming V5. Now, this is one of the only motherboards that this CPU is compatible with. You have to look specifically for C232 motherboards, and this is one of them. A downside to using this kind of motherboard with a Xeon processor is the fact that you're limited to 2133 megahertz RAM. Now, like, that's it. You can't really overclock your RAM at all. Uh, this is Gil Super Loose DDR4 I have in here, and it's it's factory clocked to 2400 megahertz, but when I went to set it manually and even turn on XMP profile, the computer straight up refused to boot. This motherboard is also refurbished. I saved about 35 bucks going for the refurbished version. I'll have the link to this motherboard in particular in the video's description. If it's no longer available and you know Newegg takes it down, it's not refurbished anymore, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll take the link out. But for now, if you want to build something like this, I do recommend this board. I think it's the nicest looking of all the boards offered and it's, it's relatively cheap if you're looking at the refurbished version of this. Apart from that, I'm cooling everything with a Kraken X60 from NZXT. This is my second X60 that I purchased off of Newegg, and both of these have been refurbished. Uh, you can pick them up currently for $89.99 uh, US dollars on Newegg if they're still available. And this cooler appears to be brand new. Uh, both of them were sealed. I know they, they reseal them themselves, but they've done a great job at making these things look brand new. And uh, both have been very reliable so far. They're also decently discounted. And when you take into consideration the fact that the X61 is still around 130, 140 bucks, you're getting a $40 discount for a cooler that cools almost the same as the X61. So consider that. Uh, I did receive one without the mounting gear, uh, but if you follow me on Twitter, you'll know that NZXT was very cool about hooking me up with that gear year sending it two day shipping and uh, it was great so that's why I purchased another one and that's the one that's in this rig and it's working out pretty well so far. If you're wondering what kind of graphics card I have in here, no, it's not a GTX 970. It's a GTX 960 Gigabyte WinForce G1 Gaming Edition graphics card. Yeah, a lot of you are probably thinking, Greg, you threw a four-core, eight-thread Xeon beast, essentially an i7 into a computer with a GTX 960. Really? I mean, not even an R9 380? What are you doing? I have a, actually I have two reasons for this. The first reason was that I got this thing refurbished for a really good price, 180 bucks. We're talking a four gig GTX 960. These usually go for about 220, 230 dollars. I got this one refurbished and it's great. I'm a big fan of refurbished products, by the way, if you can't already tell. In most cases, you can just return them if they're not functional, uh, but usually you'll get a pretty good steal on a product that will work just as fine and look just as good as a brand new product, a uh, brand new version of the same product. So that was my first reason, but also I plan on replacing this card entirely with one of the two new Pascal NVIDIA cards. I'm not sure which one I'm gonna pick yet. Uh, a lot of you have been telling me that you want to see a review of the 1070 and not necessarily 1080 just because the 1070 seems like a better deal. So, if you're talking around Titan X performance for about 400 bucks, maybe that's the one I'll throw in there. I wanna hear from you guys in the comments which one you would like for me to put into this rig, but I do plan on pairing the Xeon 4-core 8-thread processor with one of the one or the other, uh, either the 1070 or the 1080. <laughs> I've finally moved on from my 320 gig Western Digital Caviar Blue Drive to a one terabyte Western Digital Caviar Black Drive. So we're talking performance, we're talking a quiet hard drive, and much more storage for these extra games that I've been downloading. GTA 5 is 65 or so gigabytes. That is such a big game. Everyone in the house had to turn off all of their Wi-Fi devices. Uh, I was draining everything. There was such a big bottleneck throughout the house when it came to Wi-Fi because I was sucking down so much juice uh, to download these games. But uh, most of them are downloaded, and uh, speaking of which, that's what I want to, to do next. So we're gonna run some benchmarks on this computer here, some synthetics, and then we'll run some gaming benchmarks, see how well the Xeon does when paired with the GTX 960, and then also a GTX 970, which I have in a box somewhere over there. I'm gonna throw that in here, and then I run the same benchmarks again, just to see what kind of delta we should expect between the two, given that we're not really going to be experiencing much of a CPU bottleneck at all. So, here are the benchmarks.
I really love this processor. Now, it's not overclockable. It does have turbo boost, but it's not overclockable like our 6600K was. Uh, so that's why a lot of those benchmarks mimic those from that i5. Uh, but apart from that, I mean, you're only paying 20 bucks more for a processor that has twice as many threads. Uh, now you are limited in terms of the motherboard availability, uh, but you can you can kind of customize that. I painted my heat sinks. I will show you that in a future video if it's not in the card above me already, but you can certainly make things look a little better than they already do. I didn't mention the case for this build, but this is another Fantex Eclipse P400. This is the black version this time. I just wanted to reiterate the fact that this is my new favorite mid-tower case. I'm in love with it. It's basically an NZXT S340 without the little uh, shield in front, of course, uh, but you also get built-in LEDs that can change colors. I don't know why it said on red, but you can change them to practically whatever you want to match the colors inside of your PC. I'm using a deep cool kit, so this is uh, basically a little Little upgrade from the Logisys kit that I featured in the video in the card above me. So instead of getting one strip, you get two strips and that's why uh, it's making a little L shape here. So it's a little brighter inside and I, I do prefer this deep cool kit over the Logisys one. So I might do a review on those in particular. Um, everything else I think looks really great. This is one of my favorite builds. Uh, if you guys think that I should paint this graphics card white like I did my GTX 970, let me know and uh, maybe I'll throw a video up detailing how to do that specifically. These Gigabyte graphics cards are very difficult to take apart. It's not as easy as just unscrewing the backplate. You have to take apart the entire thing before you even get the backplate off to paint. So uh, all of that kind of culminates into a very difficult process. <laughs> If you have any questions about the rig, be sure to leave those in the comment section below. We'll check all of those out. Uh, did I not mention anything? The, oh, the power supply. 600 watt 80 plus bronze from EVGA is in there. Uh, th this whole build sips on power. The Xeon is a very low TDP and so does the 960. So we're talking maybe a 350 watt total power draw from the wall under full load, which is very low considering the power that this PC packs. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked what you saw, if you liked the new setting and you liked the new style of videos that have been going on recently on the channel. Give the video a thumbs down if you just hate everything about life. Uh, be sure to click the subscribe button if you haven't already and stay tuned for some pretty cool tutorials. I think I'm going to show you guys a few things, particularly how to paint those heat sinks, which I've already filmed up top, and then uh, maybe how to paint the graphics card if y'all are into that. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.